Toy Machine was just starting to pay me my 250 bucks a month, which at the time for me, that was huge. But I like decided in my mind, like I'm gonna ride for real. Cause I was going to San Francisco quite a bit and was skating a lot with Drake Jones. And so me and him like kind of plotted me getting on real. Drake was like, yeah, well just quit Toy Machine and then we'll make it happen. And I literally was on my way to go quit Toy Machine, bumped face to face with Deer Dick. And he's like, where are you going right now? I was like, oh, actually I'm going to quit Toy Machine for real. And he was like, what? And I said, yeah, man, but I'm getting a check. You know, he's like, how much are they gonna pay you? And I was like, 250 bucks. And he was like, we'll cut you a check right now. So I didn't even make it to the Toy Machine booth. I just went straight to the Alien booth. Chris Carter opened up his checkbook, wrote me a check for 250 bucks, gave it to me. And then I went and quit Toy Machine. Like right then and there, it was that fast. Like boom, 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 now I ride for Alien. Just Kalis. Jamie was like huge. If it wasn't for Jamie, you know, who knows what might have happened with me with any of this skate stuff. I mean, I'm sure people help people out in skateboarding all the time, but you know, I, this one was real big. And it hurt me when he got so hurt that I quit. And I felt like I let him down. But at the same time, it was almost like a sigh of relief, you know, because it was like, all right, this is where I'm going to be for a long time. Now I'm on Alien and I'm spending a lot of time in San Francisco. At this time, this is when Pier 7 was just like coming to light. Like I remember them building Pier 7 and walking by and we'd be like, damn, it's too bad they didn't make those ledges a little longer. But we could just go over to Pier 7 and it was, at the time, the ground was like glossy. Everyone just started hanging out there. So Pier 7 was like my new home. And Lenny Kirk wrote for Alien at the, at the same time too. And me and Lenny actually got a place together. The ill thing about Frisco and me and Lenny that people don't know is neither one of us made any money. I made 250 bucks. I don't even know if Lenny got paid. But we lived in the illest brand new apartment on Fillmore, right above like the Ponderosa. I was getting shoes from like Vans, Etnies, Dukes and Duffs all at the same time. So I was like having stacks of shoes and we would sell them at FTC or we'd go down to the pier and sell them and like, I was probably clocking like three G's a month just on selling product to pay for this like super sick lifestyle that me and Lenny were living in Frisco. So we're filming for Time Code and I get a new phone one video and I put it in there and lo and behold, there's like two of my, what I considered heavy hitting tricks for Time Code in the phone one. It was the line at Pier 7 with the Frontside flip nose grind and then half cab frontside nose grind at the pier and then the 360 flip over the liver sedge street gap, they call it. So those two tricks were actually supposed to be in time code. And I think that it changed the part dramatically because those were two of my like, they had to been in there and they slid into a four and one and I was, dude, I was pissed. Oh. I think time code had a little bit more significance to me because I I think the comfort level I had at Alien was so strong that now I looked at it like I'm really representing something that is me. To be rolling with Lenny Kirk, me and him were like sharking through San Francisco, you know what I mean? Like we had gold teeth and fucking Uzi earrings and Javante Turner and Mike Carroll showing up to my parties, you know, and like Time code really represented like that part of my life that we were just kind of crushing it. And we knew we were crushing it. it, like you could feel it. So after time code, we took a road trip to Philly and New York. And when we got to Philadelphia, I walked past this, this bus station and I looked and I was like, I knock on the thing and it was Stevie like, oh, what up? I said, let's go up to Love, man, let's walk. And he just had his little 40 ounce and we walked up to Love Park and I literally stepped up in a love park and none of the big names were there anymore, you know? Maybe they were around, but they weren't there. There was some weird changing of the guard that had happened or was happening, but there was no guard. You know what I mean? There's nobody here repping anymore. Like, what's everyone doing? Like, who do I need? Cause I, you know, I don't think Stevie knew like what my train of thought was, you know what I mean? But I seen Mike Carroll and Henry do it at Embarco. I seen Ricky and them do it at Love. 
I'm at the top of my game right now. Like, this shit's there, it's ready. It was just mainly like, okay, here comes KT. Like, okay, here comes Grecky. And then all of a sudden, you got fucking the Love Park era. The one that like took over the old era. The one that shined bigger than the old era. Love Park, it's perfect. It's got everything. Big ledges, little ledges, long ledges, short ledges. Big stairs, little stairs. It's got everything. Skate there every day, unless the cops are there. Now it's illegal at this time. Now the cops come, you know, you get thrown out. It wasn't that big a deal until later, but when the Trans World video Six Sense came out, that's what solidified Josh and Stevie love part because before that, I don't think there was like a full explanation of like big ledges, little ledges, it has everything. It's showing the cops, it's showing the atmosphere, it's showing the dudes running away. The only thing people knew about love was like when Ricky and them were skating it and it was free and open, but now this is like the new love. You haven't seen it in a while. And here's the dudes that are skating it and this is the culture of Love Park because that shit had its own culture, dude. That shit looked a little lazy to me. <laughs> The majority of the time I was filming with Ryan G. He was a pain in the ass to get out of the house. It was like me being like, yo dude, you're, you know, you're meeting me there. And we could do that because of the relationship we had, you know what I mean? And he'd be like, fuck, all right, you know? And we would meet down there and literally would just be skating. And then we're like, you know what, let's film that. And we would just film what we're skating. There was rarely a time when it was like, you know what, I want to try this trick. Let's go try it. It was literally like show up, skate, feel something out and then like boom let's film it and when Transworld approached me and said that they wanted me to have a part in their video i was like yeah and it was you know it was just me but at the same time stevie was having problems catching board sponsors you know so my idea was like you know what stevie just film some shit and put it in my video part because then it's there like forever and then they they have something that they can look at and be like damn that's dope so stevie casually filmed all that shit it was rad you know those were like casual stevie clips at the federal building like the illest kickflip no slide fakie with the cast on his hand and all that shit like that was us just cruising around and somebody like me that can say like yeah you know i went to a minority school and i didn't have that much money and all that stuff but the reality is is like I grew up in like a decent house. I had my own room. I was grounded a lot and all that, but you know, I deserve some of it. Stevie was born into like gnarliness. He is the definition of make something out of nothing. And for me to be able to say that I played a big part in that and to help him, and it's not even like helping him, but it was just like giving him that window, the same window that Jamie gave me or Deirdre gave me, it's like, I didn't know I was giving him a window, but it helped me out too, you know what I mean? Because if it was just me trying to carry the weight of Love Park, it just wouldn't have worked, you know what I mean? But me and Stevie, like, that shit was just awesome. And if I look back at that video part, it's my favorite video part I've ever had because everything about it was just, it was like me. It was, it was my vision, it had love, it had Dallas, it was filmed by G. There was nothing set up. It was like free skating, filming with the homies. And my best friend is in it, you know what I mean? My life leading up to photo changed quite a bit because in the beginning of photosynthesis, like when we were just starting to film for it, I was still broke, but Sometime filming for photo, I actually got on DC shoes. And then even before photo came out, I got a shoot. So now at the beginning of photosynthesis, broke as a joke, driving an 87 Accord, living in North Philly. By the time the video came out, I had a shoe, I had a house, I had a Beamer. That all happened in like that short period of time. And so that's another pinnacle video part for me because I get to see like, like, oh shit, I was broke right then. Like, oh shit, now I had some money. Oh shit, now the cops ain't kicking me out of love anymore because I'm paying them off with shoes. That shoe right there. Come on with ball head nigga from New York with the gangster woke, the gangster talk, thrilling the 
find him a killer.